Hi, welcome to episode 3 of the series where I try to find the best method to increase the Wi-Fi range. Now, up until now, I tried to do so by increasing the power, which wasn't very helpful. Then I tried using different types of antennas, which had its own issues. So as you can see, so far I only used one access point, but it looks like it's not gonna work for me, and I need to use at least a secondary device. That's why in this video I'm gonna try to use a repeater, also known as a range extender, and see what happens. A repeater is a secondary device that wirelessly connects to the main source of Wi-Fi and rebroadcasts the signal, thus extending the Wi-Fi range. Now I wanna emphasize that the backhaul connection here is wireless, otherwise this would not be considered a repeater. Back in the day we used to have single band repeaters which were not very good because they would use the same 2.4 GHz radio for the backhaul and also for the clients. Basically we were sharing the same radio for two different purposes, resulting in a loss of approximately 50% performance for the clients. Now just imagine how terrible it would become if I added another daisy chain repeater here. So if I ever want to use repeaters, I'd better forget about single band repeaters entirely. Unless of course the goal is simply to add a few clients which are not network intensive. Also I should aim to minimize the number of hops between the clients and the primary node. So if I need to have two repeaters, it is much better to connect both of them directly to the primary node rather than to each other. Later on we had dual band repeaters which were significantly better than the single band repeaters because now I had the option to use one band for the backhaul and the other one for the clients. I could still share the radio I used for the backhaul with the clients if I needed to but as we saw in the previous example there would be a negative effect. So it would be great if I could design the network to use one band exclusively for the clients and the other one solely for the backhaul without serving clients. Now if I have to use one band for both backhaul and clients it would be best to reserve it for the clients that can handle lower speeds and higher latency such as a Wi-Fi printer and definitely not for network intensive clients. Now which band do you think I should choose for the backhaul? Well, it depends on many factors such as the requirements, environment, and overall network design. For example, the 5 GHz band offers a wider available bandwidth, making it faster, but it has a shorter range. Therefore, if the repeater needs to be positioned further away, I might not be able to use the 5 GHz band for the backhaul, and instead I would have to rely on the 2.4 GHz band due to its longer range. So as you can see, I have more options available here compared to the single band repeater. And depending on the situation and requirements, I can configure the repeater to best accommodate the specific scenario. Alright, before moving forward to tri band repeaters, let's quickly review what we talked about so far. Number one, there are obsolete single band repeaters which are not very good if the goal is to have quality Wi Fi because they're sharing the same 2.4 GHz band, which is already not very fast, for the backhaul and for the client. Luckily there are also dual band repeaters which are much better because you can dedicate one band for the backhaul and the other one for the clients. Number two, now since the backhaul connection in a repeater is wireless, that means the repeater and the primary node have to be within the wireless range of each other. So for example, I just cannot place the repeater wherever I want and it has to be within the wireless range of the primary node in order to be functional. Number three, if I choose to use the same band for the backhaul and also for the repeater, not only am I sharing the same radio, which as we saw earlier will degrade the performance by something around 50%, but this will also cause co-channel interference, making the quality of the connection even worse. For example, if this is connected to the primary node on the 2.4 GHz channel 1 because the primary node is broadcasting on channel 1, then it has to rebroadcast on the same channel because it is the same radio and it cannot broadcast on a different channel, not until this backhaul connection exists. 
So this way both 2.4 GHz networks are essentially broadcasting on the same channel. They are overlapping too, so this will cause inevitable co-channel interference, which is not good, and degrades the quality of the 2.4 GHz network even further. That's another reason why it's not a good idea to rebroadcast this band here. Now regarding the other band, the situation is different because I can choose a non-overlapping channel for this band, which is very good because these two Wi-Fi networks can coexist without harming each other. Now if the repeater is tri-band, the situation is even better. Because now I can dedicate one band for the backhaul and use the other two for the clients, on both sides and without compromising any of them. Now, if it is a Wi-Fi 6 tri-band repeater, that means there will be two 5 GHz bands and one 2.4 GHz band. Typically, one of the 5 GHz bands would be used for the backhaul and the other two for the clients. However, if it is a Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7 repeater, then we will have one 2.4 GHz, one 5 GHz and one 6 GHz band. Here it will again depend on my requirements whether to use the 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz or 6 GHz band for the backhaul. The 6 GHz band obviously on paper is the one with the best quality given that it is the newest and has many more channels available compared to the other two. However, it has the shortest range so the repeater has to be even closer to the main node. In some cases, for example, when the clients are Wi-Fi 6 or older and they do not support the 6 GHz band, it might be better to use the 6 GHz band for the backhaul and not for the clients. However, for other cases, this might work best. Alright, so the repeater is an interesting device because it could be good for a couple of reasons, but it could also be bad for the exact same reasons. Huh? A repeater is good because it's an easy and inexpensive solution. I mean, I don't have to make a huge change in my network. I don't need to replace every device and buy a whole new system in order to increase the range. There could be a working network, maybe a wireless router or an access point. It doesn't even matter what brand the primary node is. I can simply add a repeater to this network. Now, although setting up a repeater is relatively easy, if I do not implement basic network network design principles and not set up the repeater correctly, the quality of the repeater's Wi-Fi could be really bad. Essentially, I just cannot completely rely on the repeater to make every decisions for me and magically provide an excellent Wi-Fi. I'm the one who should understand the requirements and set up the repeater accordingly. A repeater is also good because the backhaul is wireless and I don't have to worry about wiring. So simple, I just find a good spot for the repeater, set it up and boom, good to go. I mean yes, backhaul is wireless so no wiring is needed. But at the same time, the distance between the nodes is very limited and I cannot place the repeater further than a point. Also, again, everything is wireless and wireless is very unpredictable. So for example, an interference on the backhaul connection can bring down the repeater and all the devices connected to it. On top of that, when we have more than one Wi-Fi node, one aspect of network that all of a sudden becomes very important is seamless roaming. So for example, when a client device moves between the nodes, it should be able to roam between the Wi-Fi network seamlessly and with the least amount of downtime. However, when we have a repeater, roaming is usually unfortunately not very seamless. First off, the repeater and the primary node are usually not well coordinated in terms of roaming. This is because the primary node might be from one brand while the repeater is from another. So they typically do not facilitate the roaming process. As a result, the responsibility of roaming falls mainly on the client devices, determining when and how to disconnect from one network and connect to the other. Also for a seamless roaming experience, it is recommended that these two Wi-Fi networks have something around a 15-20% to 20 overlap. Unfortunately, achieving this with repeaters is not possible as a repeater has to be within the wireless range of the primary node to be functional. 
Therefore, it is highly likely that if a client is closer to the repeater, it may still remain connected to the primary node, leading to what we call sticky client issue. So overall, considering everything, using repeaters could be beneficial in many scenarios, but because of its disadvantages, it is definitely not the best solution. And for that reason, I want to keep looking. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again, and I will see you next time.